know that even if we are absent from the body, we're still present with the spirit. Amen? Amen. You're under arrest. This ain't nothing but the devil. I don't care what that judge says. You always gonna be my family. Well, we're to the final episode, the crescendo, the last hoorah for the shy season three. It is episode 10, the finale. We're here. And ladies and gentlemen, everybody, some people are expecting a Regis sighting to come kill Duda. I don't think that's what we're going to see. But we're going to take a look at this trailer, break it down the way we always do. And if you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Take a look at who decided to come help me do the finale trailer review. It's Baby L. I can't get her to go to sleep, so I'm going to have to do this trailer breakdown with her. L, you want to say hey to the camera? Say hey. This is the only thing greater than me. The baby. Let's watch the rest of this trailer and um, we're gonna break it down as best we can. You know I ain't perfect, right? Ain't nobody perfect in me. Speak now or forever hold your peace. We will always be here. Here for what? I don't know what I wanna do. First thing, we've got them getting ready to put Poe Ronnie in the grave, Poe fella. Next clip, we fade to that wonderful, wonderful Tracy, who has just got to be devastated. Poe Ronnie died, didn't get none of the panty draws, and she was soaking wet for him, ready to give him to him. And then all of a sudden, I think she was about to take him home after they left Smokey's. And before they could get there, bam, he's done, man. And I know she has got to be painted. She's lost so many people. Then they just pan the crowd. You see Ronnie's friends who were probably devastated he was about to get out. And then the one person you've got to really know is probably feeling some kind of way is Keisha. Not only is she dealing with the death of her stalker and taker, she is now dealing with the death of Ronnie, the person that saved her who also mentioned to her about how hard it is to get out of Chicago. And I just... Um, what this girl must be going through, I don't think any of us can imagine it. Very next clip, telling, telling clip. The police coming for Papa Daddy. Now, who is he getting in trouble for? Is it for Camille or is it for some slip-handed thing he done with Duda? One or the other one. Or is this something else? Because, you know, if he was a little dirty taking money for Camille, even though he was doing the right things with it, Who's to say he hasn't been doing these type of practices his whole entire church career? Po, po, brother, man. Then you see Kev talking to Papa and Jake about what's going on. And I know Papa, Papa probably on the inside has seen that his dad can be, a, can be Robin Hood giving to the poor. You know, taking things with ill-gotten gains and then trying to share it. So I'm sure he's not surprised. Then the very next clip, we see Jake in the elevator talking to Trig and Imani. And then we see them in court. Now, the, the question here is, does Jake, does Jake go and stay with Trig? Did the judge give custody to Trig? The way this is looking, the way it's sounding, probably not. But I guess we'll find out soon. Next clip, we see Emmett talking to Tiff. Now, I don't know what kind of love language they were speaking, but since you guys are some of the best YouTube subscribers in all the planet Earth, what was they saying? I could, I missed it. Was they talking Chicago dirty slang? Was this jibber jabbers from um, Jabberjaw? What in the I missed all that. Um, I missed what he said. I missed what she said. Somebody break that down for me. Next clip, we see them getting married. Look like they just went and did curbside, just as other piece. Which is nothing wrong with that. And don't you ever let anybody tell you it's something wrong with that. Getting married in this manner is fine. You can always set a date for a bigger glorified reception. Matter of fact, this is a great way for you all to save money. Because it's not about the moment of the marriage. It's about the lifetime moments you create together. But we all know that they're getting ready to be creating a whole lifetime of misery because the Dom situation is not resolved. They pan to the daddy who you know when they're asking, 
Is there anyone here who would like to speak, whomever hold their peace? I believe that daddy is going to pop off. I, I, I believe the daddy is about to say something. He's about to call her a cheater. He don't care for Tiff. And you can see the mama looking at the daddy like, shut your ass up. You better not say nothing. You better not say nothing. Next clip, we see Kev, who I'm glad we did the live last night with Larry and Sharonda. Larry broke down exactly what Kev is going through because I've seen a lot of women comment that Kev is tripping, he ain't doing right, he need a whipping, but Kev is hurting too. Kev lost Brandon. There's no male figure in his life for him to reach out to. Hell, there's really nobody for him to reach out to. He's at odds with Gemma. Are you expecting him to get good communication and understanding from Jake? Maybe Papa, but Papa's still a kid himself. And you've got his mama who's not a great communicator. And you've got a sister who's just been tormented. Her mind is demented right now. There's no outlet for him. Maybe Dre's supposed to be the outlet. Being that she's a counselor, you would think she would be able to understand what Kev is going through as well. It's basically like this man is on an island in his own house. He walks in and he catches them discussing something. And apparently they haven't told Kev that Keisha is pregnant. Will they tell him? I don't see how you don't tell him. And then they finish this trailer with Sean Keisha in the darkness. And I think that what they're doing with this clip was, if you look at it from the beginning, she's in the darkness. Then they end with her in the light. I think they're clearly saying that in the beginning, she's thinking about going to having the abortion. And then a light switches on for her to keep the child. And look at that picture in the background, the man and the woman hugging and loving each other. I think that Keisha is going to have some kind of emotional attachment to this child that makes her have the baby. This child could be something that she puts all her love, her emotions, her attachments to, to help her cope with the trauma she's going through, even though that would be terribly wrong to do because that child is going to be a constant reminder of what she's going through and what Chicago has done to her. So you guys leave me all your comments. I have word on good authority that this last episode may not make anyone happy. But let me know what you guys think. Be sure to follow my reviews for Lovecraft Country. It is a damn good show. Excellent show. And be sure to catch me and Larry live as we go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. And if you haven't started investing, get that Robin Hood app, ladies and gentlemen. I am showing you guys how you can passively make good money using a strategy called the wheel option strategy of trading. And all you just got to do is have a little bit of cash and you let your cash go to work for you. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life gain. Follow me on Instagram. Shoot me messages over there about anything I cover on my channel. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.